my beast wouldn't start for me yesterday. I was pulling a P0336 crankshaft sensor code. First thing I did, it was a crank no start. It ran fine, I shut it off and then it wouldn't run. First thing I did was graph this out. Um, this yellow wire, this is the, the signal wire that goes into the ECM. It was getting a no spark. And in the middle of diagnosing the thing, it just decided to start and run. It was pulling a signal. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the heck was going on. So, regardless, I'm going to replace a crankshaft sensor in here. I think it's already been done once too. Just from the looks of this, I'm, I'm going to go through what I do to diagnose these things. First thing I did was check the signal. If you can't do that, you know it's. The biggest reason why I poke this, you should never really poke these wires. It's a solid yellow wire, you can't miss it. The biggest reason why I poke this is because I wanted to check continuity from the sensor connector to this wire just to make sure that the wire wasn't broken and it passed. So I'll go through a couple other things here, show you what's going on. I got a suspicious feeling that somebody put a crankshaft sensor in this a long time ago and didn't calibrate it. Every, every time you do one of these, you need to calibrate the crankshaft sensor to make sure that it's correct. Um, if it doesn't, sometimes when you put them in, they don't even start. Sometimes they start hard. So I've been having a hard start issue with this thing. There's TSBs on this too with, with the, the reluctor. Um, hitting the crankshaft sensor once in a while and when it does that it ruins the sensor and then it doesn't work anymore and and, and they, they sell the, the dealer sells five millimeter shims for this thing so you gotta you gotta you gotta measure the air gap of the reluctor on the harmonic balancer for the sensor but in the meantime I gotta cover all my bases because I don't want this thing breaking down on me in the middle of nowhere so I'm gonna I disconnected the negative terminal and I gotta take this see this little blue funky safety screwy clip there's one down here for this I'm gonna pop that off and then I gotta try to get in here I wanna I wanna get this connector off of here you can't see what you're doing but I got this hook tool that got it out for me and the reason why I'm doing this, I disconnected the negative terminal because I'm going to actually induce voltage into this wire to make sure that it's not partially broken. Because sometimes you can check continuity to a wire and if it's, if it's partially broken, it can pass a continuity test. But if you actually induce voltage into this and use a test light, sometimes the test light doesn't turn on and if it's if it's dim if it's not bright or if it doesn't turn on then you know that there's a partial break or a break in this wire that's still got um, strands of wire that are still touching so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down to the connector down on the sensor and I'm, I'm gonna put voltage in this and put a test light on this side and, and make sure that it gets a nice strong test light okay I lit up nice and bright so that's good that means I know that my my wire is real strong I'm probably gonna I'm gonna seal this wire back up with uh, liquid tape so it's nice and waterproof again and I'm going to plug all this back in and plug the battery in and go back downstairs down, on, down at the crankshaft and I'm going to show you how to test the rest of these wires. Basically I, I disconnected the battery. I used a power probe to induce voltage but I isolated the battery so, so this wire was the only, the, the only wire that was getting power to the whole car. So basically what I did is I ran a ground from the battery to the to the test light wire right here and then 
and then I ran my power through here and then and then you know the power from the battery down at the connector at the plug and then it, it runs its way up here so that that way I'm not I'm not using the power of the ground for anything else in the bat in the car then I'm not I'm not forcing voltage in into the computer so I know I'm not going to damage anything now I'm going to plug the battery back in put the negative on terminal back on I'm going to plug this connector back in here and uh, go down go down and do the rest of my testing okay now I'm down here this is the crankshaft sensor I disconnected it's right by the harmonic balancer on the bottom of the car you really can't miss it and now I'm just going to use my power probe you can use a, a voltmeter to do this too if you want I guess but yeah the center one's a ground you see my power probe comes up ground and then this one right here is going to be a power so I know it's getting power and ground and I know these are good I can put a test light on this one too and it'll light up I already did it just to make sure just to make sure that that power wire is good and strong and this this ground that that goes to the ECM and uh, I'm just gonna hope that that wire is in really good shape it should be I don't want to start inducing voltage into the thing either just because it's it's for the computer I got a feeling somebody replaced this because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this connector right now and I can see it's it's kind of folded over a little bit so that's telling me this thing's been out before and somebody crammed it in there and a lot of times they don't they don't seal too perfect because these get swollen when they get old so somebody had this off once before and plugged it in I don't know if this is a factory sensor or not but I'm gonna be taking that off next I'm gonna get this connector off of here these are funky Well, yeah, this thing's broke, kind of broke, kind of, kind of, and it's greasy. This here's an eight millimeter. You just take it out like that. Oh, I'm looking inside the hole. I want to get a five a socket. I don't know I think it might be a 16 millimeter if you're a metric guy I know small block Chevy's the harmonic balancer bolt is a, is a 5 a socket and I want to turn this you should go clockwise and I'm just gonna keep turning it until I can get until I can get on a reluctor tooth there's a tooth right there That's exactly what that technical service bulletin was talking about. See that little spot right there? It's been hitting the reluctor. This crankshaft sensor is too close. It's obviously not damaged because it's pulling a signal. Something happened that was wrong with this though. So I got to check the air gap on this and make sure it's kosher. And um... I'm gonna put a new sensor in it there's what I got it crushed that much and if I take and just pick this a little bit just as a guess I'd say that's about a five thousandths air gap in there so this should be good. I shouldn't have to put any of them shims in here. This came with shims too. They're five millimeters a piece for a total of ten millimeters. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm just gonna toss this one in there, see if it wants to run. 
Well, just for fun, I'm going to turn this a full revolution and I'm going to check this sensor again and see if there's any marks on it from it hitting anything. It looks completely untouched. Yeah, you want to make sure that this surface is clean too, so you get the right gap. Okay, now I'm going to see if this thing wants to run. Make sure these wires aren't touching the harmonic balancer or anything. Sounds like it runs really nice. This thing does start a lot better. I, I'm, I'm gonna call it a fix. Liquid tape on the wire. Two coats. Well, there it is. It's getting a lot stronger signal. I went under here and used a T-pin. So, yeah, I guess uh, that crankshaft sensor probably did have a problem with it because this new sensor's got a lot stronger signal. I did a crankshaft sensor relearn with this Autel Maxi Dash too. You're going to want to do a relearn if you ever if you ever do one of these sensors. It's just a good idea. And that's it. Okay, bye.